Hey, what's up everybody? So I'm gonna go over the S7 concept today. Um, just starting this group out, uh, in the beginning, I'm gonna post a lot more of the concepts, obviously, because that's the first thing I want you guys to review and learn. Um, timing's probably not the best, right? Starting something on Thanksgiving break, but maybe it is better because instead of having to be in the gym or working out, you guys could spend time just watching the videos thinking about how the concepts really work and applies and then hit it hard next week. So one of the concepts that I've been posting about uh, S7, it's pretty much seven categories that you can apply to any movement or technique so that you can train more optimally for that movement or technique, whether it's an exercise like a bicep curl or something as complex as a sport movement like a golf swing. That will allow you to get the most out of the training because if you hit all seven categories, then there's like no stones unturned. The other thing is that if you have chronic pain or injuries, <clears throat> hopefully one of these categories are going to highlight the root cause of the problem. So this programming template, uh, the seven categories are, and I'm just run through them real quick. I'm going to post uh, on the FixFit Tribe each individual video and break down each category more in depth. So... You have movement mobility, you have holds, you have core slash rotation, that's one thing. You have strength, explosive power or power, you have speed, and you have stamina. So those are the seven. Just to go over a couple of them, how it applies, um, let's use something as simple as a push-up, right? So if you just did a push-up and... If you didn't think about those other categories, right, and you're just doing regular push-ups, you're pretty much just training strength, right? That's all you're getting from it. And most people, when they target any exercise, they're just trying to do more, right? You get a couple more push-ups the next time, you get a little lower, then you're improving the strength part. <clears throat> but that's so limited. <clears throat> to me, it's not optimal because you're missing so much more in terms of application. So let's say you need to do push-ups and then try to really figure out where your shoulder pain is coming from or why your elbow hurts there's a plane flying by so hopefully it's not too loud so the first part is that movement mobility so instead of just doing the push-up just repping it out one of the categories we would focus on is the mobility and for us it's muscle range of motion or muscle tension through the range of motion all those fancy words, but if your shoulder starts to hurt on a push-up and you don't know why, or your elbow, then we wanna make sure that when you're doing the push-up, <clears throat> that movement mobility is factored in. So if we're working on that category, then I wanna make sure you know your lats, your pec, your riblets are firing through that full range. So that would be the focus of that push-up or that part, we could use bands. So the goal is if I'm trying to feel my pec stay on from the start all the way to the finish, it's a way different focus than just doing more push-ups, right? So that's the movement mobility part. I'm trying to go through the full range of motion of that movement and make sure all the right muscles are staying on. So an example is I uh, worked with a couple wrestlers and they've had knee issues, right? And they went through the traditional routes, try to see what's wrong, um, the uh, the imaging everything was fine nothing was torn things like that other corrective exercises weren't helping so i asked them in what movement or what technique were they doing that the knee hurts the most and so one of the categories that i was using already naturally is that movement mobility so when they bend their legs and their hips to get lower a level change if you're familiar or not think of it as like almost like a lunge or a one-legged squat. When they were doing that, the knees hurt. So if I'm using that movement mobility for that level change and more complex movement, I could figure out or help them figure out that when they're coming down, what muscles are on or what muscles are shutting off? Asking that question why the knee hurts, just like the push-up. So if you started going down and you're like, right here is where that shoulder starts to hurt, then we can use that category, that movement mobility, to figure out where it's coming from. Or something more, um, I guess, familiar than some wrestling technique is if you ever thrown a ball or swing a golf club, 
if you were to rotate back here and you start to feel low back pain or hip pain, then we would use that specific movement or technique and make sure that you have mobility, movement mobility, and figure out what's missing. Then you can actually train it to fix it. You can figure out the root cause of the pain. So that's movement mobility, completely different focus. And again, you can apply that to anything. Uh, I learned something new from it, just doing bicep curls. Just doing bicep curls. Got you back now. The, if I were to apply that concept for the bicep, yeah, movement mobility. When I'm using a dumbbell and curling, I want to make sure that bicep's actually staying on from the start all the way to the end. And so on my right side, it's good. But actually targeting something so simple as a bicep curl, I realize that on my left side, the bicep has a hard time staying on even though it's a bicep curl. So right around here, it starts to kind of shut off. And then I can ask, her, ask that question, why is it happening? I don't know. But this is the side that has the shoulder, the elbow, a lot more issues. So the movement mobility, the focus is trying to keep that bicep actually on, engage, making sure that bicep is driving that movement the whole way. It, it's way harder than um, I thought it was going to be. And I didn't even realize that when the bicep during this curl, the bicep actually shuts off. So interesting, right? Because then if I would have just did bicep curls for the sake of strength, right? Then I would have missed this whole part of this mobility. So the movement mobility, as you can see, uh, has a different focus, one of the categories. The other ones for that push-up are more simple. Strength is, you know, you can measure how many push-ups you do, right? You can measure you know, add weight on your back or bench press, right? That's just getting stronger. You're flexing against the weight. Uh, some of the other categories that aren't factored in, right, are kind of that explosive strength. If you need the push for whatever reason that's more sport related, popping up on a surfboard, right, from a surfboard, that's very explosive. Doing a burpee is very explosive. But most people don't train that in a push-up. They're just repping it out. It's like one continuous speed or tempo they're not trying to push with a lot of force because they don't really think about it they're just doing push-ups right so if i'm doing push-ups and i'm targeting a different category now that explosive power i would control down and then actually use the right muscles and push as hard as i can and that's the explosive because then when i do things that are you know if you need to push someone if you need a punch if you need to pop up on a surfboard or for us crossfitters do a burpee that's an explosive push so again if we're doing it for performance i want to train that push up making sure i hit that category being explosive with it because that's way different from strength it's way different from just that movement mobility and then it's going to be more uh functional or applicable to my hobbies or my goals then same thing too, if you've been training it that way and then something happens, because you're fine maybe doing push-ups, but then right when you do a burpee or something, or you shove someone because you're wrestling or something, or you're popping up on a surfboard, then your elbow or your shoulder starts to hurt. Even when you do something like a push press or push jerk, that's way more explosive than a strict press. See where I'm getting at? So if you could, train the explosive push on that push-up, then you could start to figure out why you have that pain or injury as well during that explosive movement, like a burpee. It happens all the time. People that do something more dynamic that requires more force, like a muscle-up, like a burpee, shoulder and elbows usually get wrecked, and it's because they never train that movement pattern, that technique, with that explosive mindset. It's just like you want stronger push-ups or burpees, do more push-ups. So that's why to me, just kind of assuming corrective exercises or traditional strength training exercises are gonna carry over, they're not. So the idea is you could do a lot of push-ups at this continuous rate. It might not help you with your burpees. It might not help you with that explosive bench. It might not help you with popping up on a surfboard better. So again, another category to be trained, right? The other one that's kind of different, which is core and rotation. Uh, same idea if you're doing push-ups 
for that bench press, for that push-up, is your core actually firing properly? I don't know. No one ever really thinks about it. They just focus on the upper body of the push-up. But then if something were to happen, if you're doing a burpee or a push-up and the weight goes to your hips or lower back or you have pain there, you never even factored in or trained the core with it. And then certain things that require more rotation. Let's say you are shifting when you do a push-up. Your body's shifting, rotating, and you don't know why. It's because you've never factored in the core and the rotation to it. So the other one is speed, right? It's If you need to move fast to rep it out, then you have to train that as well because strength is just you know how much you could push, how much your muscles could flex against resistance or weight. So then you, that's just one exercise that you could do with all seven categories. Categories, same with um, the hold. So that push-up, if you hold at the top, you can really utilize that to strengthen the shoulders like a plank, right? That's a hold. But then what if you held it halfway, held it all the way down? That's going to be more applicable to sport techniques or movements. So the holds are important as well. Again, we're just trying to hit every single category. And you're going to learn a lot more from that movement. But two, it's going to really, you're going to get the most out of any exercise that you can do. So if I were to do this simple bicep curl, right, it's like I can just do that movement mobility, right? That's the focus. I'm going to break it all down on the the tribe. And then I can do the holds. I can hold right away. I can hold halfway, making sure this is on, making sure my pec and lat's on, making sure it's not going to my shoulder. So I could do heavy holds. And then I could do the strength with just how much I could curl, maybe the traditional sets of five, you know, to 12 reps. But the goal is to kind of make sure I challenge, keep lifting heavy, and then get the most out of that for strength. Explosive power, right? Something no one ever trains with bicep curls, I think. But what if you're rope climbing, if you're, you have to pull, right? You're lifting something heavy off the ground. You want to make sure that bicep's ready for that explosive drive so the example is you would just make sure everything's firing properly first and then curl with explosive force this mimics more of the application that you probably need for your arms unless you're just bodybuilding right so then you could have speed work even what if you have to sprint and move real quickly or whatever it might be for that application you're essentially trying to do reps fast like in a crossfit workout then you would actually move that bicep quickly because sometimes a technique or a movement in life demands that. So if you target all the categories, that bicep <clears throat> is the most functional. But again, the idea behind it is you're going to keep your body moving longer because there's no stones unturned. You're making sure you don't just do, you know, I don't know, the traditional 5 by 12 because you want to build that muscle. You want to get the bicep and arm stronger. There's so many holes to just following a specific program like that um, that I've seen, and that's really what causes a lot of the injuries. And then again, if you take that same S7 program template, that concept, and what's been fun is I've been applying it to sport movements, and that way you're really going to get the most out of it. So working with like an indoor rower, instead of doing farmer's holds, it's still a hold, right, to strengthen your grip and all that. What we've been doing is with the pulley system and a lot of weight, we're holding that weight in that catch position right here against a lot of weight. Wouldn't that make more sense to figure out what's wrong and to make it more, um, again, the carryover is going to be way better than to just hold kettlebells standing. So what I've seen too is like a lot of the injuries where if you train specific sports or let's say fitness programs, they usually bias on uh, one of those categories. Like CrossFit's really big on pretty much stamina, right? Because you don't want to burn out. You're going to get a worse score. You're not going to get as many rounds or reps. So if I'm doing push-ups, let's say again, within that workout, I'm just going to be moving and then resting long enough where I could keep doing sets of 10 for Cindy or Murph. That's really just stamina base, right? And maybe sometimes we'll test A one set max push up, really not as typical, but really you're just trying to make sure you never go to complete failure. So that's why in CrossFit, 
it's really more stamina based. It's like how many reps can you do re- and you keep doing it and keep doing it and you're building the capacity for stamina. But that explosive power is not really factored in. Holds aren't factored in as much. Um, the movement mobility other than stretching, right? Uh, or doing mobility wads. So again, you could just start to see there's different uh, goals. Like bodybuilding is just really all strength and size, right? Um, powerlifting, it's definitely a lot of strength. Maybe some explosive power, depending on your school of thought. Or, uh, but again, you're missing a lot of these other categories to make these things uh, more functional or more optimal. And again, because right when you start to do things, like maybe you're a strong powerlifter, and then you're doing now a quick set of bench for a drop set or something, and then your shoulder hurts, you were fine going slow and controlled, but because you've never trained the stamina, you've never trained the mobility for it um, or the holds, then you might start to run into some problems and not know where it's coming from. So the fun thing too is just doing things like, again, wrestling techniques. You can break down anyone. You could break down any jujitsu technique. If you look at any technique, any exercise from Let's say how you clinch someone in the guard for jiu-jitsu, a golf swing, or just a bicep curl. If you look at all seven categories and uh, see what you're missing, and also see if you can apply that to that technique, and it makes it way more fun. You definitely have a lot more added value if you're coaching or uh, training someone. But as your own journey, too, you could try to figure out if you're missing any of these pieces of the S7 for any single movement you do. Right, so it's not just a basic like let's just do 15 air squats every round. You can change up the purpose, the intent, by doing just a slow, continuous set of 15, or you could kind of go control down and explode up for 15. The next one you could pause at the bottom like a pause squat, come back up. That'll be more like a hold. So the core, the rotation, you could do it with one leg. I mean, the list goes on and on for the seven. And again, you're going to learn so much more about the mechanics and where your deficiencies are. So this is uh, the purpose of practicing and testing these concepts. So the three postures, the S7 currently, right? It's the most updated stuff that I'm currently utilizing to help people with injuries or coaching people with uh, on -on one-on-one, whether it's just fitness goals or sport goals. I want you guys to start to dabble with it and I'll break it down even more like i said in the uh in the beginning that fixer tribe i'll have videos of each category movement mobility holds core strength speed uh what to look out for how to train them and then our goal is to test drive it now so if this stuff sounds interesting to you and this is uh you want to continue to learn and test drive again whether you're a coach or trainer you just uh want to continue to learn you're an athlete Uh, you'll get something from it. So I want those type of people with the same uh, mindset and to join the group because then we can walk this journey together. We can learn from each other. So that's the S7 protocol. A few of you guys messaged me about it. That's why I made a longer video to really break it down and apply that plus the three posture concept. And then let's see what we get from it. So I'm still on that journey if you want to join me where I'm applying those categories, the S7, and then the three posture concept to all of this bodybuilding, uh, functional bodybuilding. I hate labeling it, but I'm trying to build a body of armor really so that I could do a lot more cool stuff. I could still keep up with the wrestlers. The um, I could still do CrossFit. I could weight lift. I could do jujitsu. I could do CrossFit. And I could fix my own problems because I'm trying to not have any weak links, right? That's the whole idea of bodybuilding. You want symmetry. You want balance. So if that's interesting to you, let me know as well because then I can share what I'm doing with you. And then we can get as fit and as huge functionally as possible together. All right. So that's pretty much it for uh, what S7 is. Again, questions. uh, Let me know. Message me about anything and then hopefully more of you guys will join me on this journey.